Hello booktube, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and today I'm doing something a little bit different today. Uh, this week I took my family away just for a few days, we stayed with it in state. Uh, but one of the places I made sure to hit, at least for a little bit, was a wonderful used bookstore in Niantic, Connecticut called The Book Barn. Um, and the main location has multiple buildings filled with uh, a great amount of whimsy. Um, we love stopping there whenever we go through that area. Uh, and on our way back, when it was raining, we stopped at one of the other book barn locations, which had uh, a little more genre, genre fiction, and uh, the children's books. Um, so what I thought I'd do was I'd show you some of the video that I took from our visit to the main location of the book barn. Um, I edited some footage together, uh, you know, practicing my video editing skills. Um, I did... I did make an effort when I was filming there to not really film people shopping. I wanted to be respectful when they were just kind of looking through a book. They didn't want to be filmed. Um, so I, if they seem to cut away very quickly, that's because I'm trying not to actually film people during my trip. Um, and also, the farther I went along, the more books I was carrying in my other hand. Uh, so, yeah, th there's some footage within the buildings I didn't really get a lot of uh, for one of those reasons. Um, but otherwise, I think you'll get, if you've never been there before, I think you'll get a good, uh, good feeling for what it's like to go visit there. And, uh, when that video is done, I will come back and I'll show you kind of the, the book haul that I got from there. Uh, some of the stuff that I picked up. It's a pretty good stack. Okay. See you then. So, the books that I got from there, uh, the first one is All But My Life by Gerda Weissman Klein. Um, this is a memoir of the Holocaust. I have actually read this before. Um, however, the copy that we had got water damaged and it became uh, pretty ugly. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I got rid of it or I put it somewhere. Uh, I get past it, paid it forward. I'm not sure exactly what I did with it. Uh, so this is actually kind of a replacement copy for our home library. Uh, my wife also read this, and she really wants to make sure that we got a copy. Um, I did pick up uh, 
I, I didn't pick up as many horror books as I would have liked to have picked up. I just picked up one thing, and that's this. This is The Monk by Matthew Lewis, uh, in Oxford World's Classics Edition. Um, I don't, I don't know if I love this cover. I kind of like the traditional Oxford World's Classics looks. Uh, but I saw this, and I've always been really curious about some of the early Gothic novels. So um, if memory serves correctly, I think Matthew Lewis wrote this uh, when he was like 19 years old in 1796. Uh, and this is, so I think, just be one of the more exciting um, early Gothic novels uh, filled with all sorts of craziness. Um, so... I do, uh, I do look forward to this. Um, when I saw this, I snatched it up. I, I had been meaning to get to this for a long time. So we've got The Monk. I also picked up uh, Joseph Ellis's Passionate Sage, The Character and Legacy of John Adams. Um, the only other John Adams biography that I've read is the one by David McCullough. Uh, and I have read by Joseph Ellis, two other biographies. I read his American Sphinx about Thomas Jefferson, which I didn't really care for, and but I also read his one on Washington, which I liked a lot better. Um, so I'm very, definitely very curious to see what he does with Adams here. Um, this is a little bit of an older book. I think this came out in the early 90s, right? Yeah, 93. Um, but uh, yeah, John Adams is certainly a character that I wanna learn more about, and uh, I don't mind jo Joseph Ellis being the one to take me on that journey. Um, so I look forward to seeing what, what this one, uh, will give me. There were two books in particular that I was really looking for, that I was searching for. Um, and this is one, and I'm really glad they had, a nice hardcover edition too. Uh, very good condition. This is Bloodlands, Europe Between Hitler and Stalin by Timothy Snyder. And, I mean, this is, you know, another feel-bad book, um, but basically just the horrible, I think, civilian, mostly, casualties that occurred uh, between Hitler and Stalin in Eastern Europe, uh, and just the horrible atrocities, really, one after another. Um, so, again, feel bad book, but I got a friend who read this, um, and he definitely found it informative and emotionally affecting, and uh, it's one that I've been on the lookout for ever since, and I've heard nothing but good stuff about this. Uh, so, yeah, this is one that I, again, that I'm really glad I was able to pick up. And it's a really nice hardcover edition. I had also found a decent hardcover edition of The Witches by Stacey Schiff. I had read her Cleopatra, uh, which I really liked. It was a terrific biography. Um, and this is her account of the Salem Witch Trials of 1692. Um, I don't know a lot about this, uh, but... You know, she's another one that I I feel like I'm in good hands if I'm if I'm going on the journey with her. Um, so uh, yeah, this thinking about maybe saving this for a like Women's History Month for next year. Um, this might be a good one. I do believe that she points out at some point that uh, you know this is one of the few times in American history where women played a prominent role in a major historic event. Um, so I might save it for that. I also picked up this very large book. We got Ron Chernow's biography of Grant. Um, <laughs> I mean, I feel bad picking this up because I do actually have his biography of Washington and Alexander Hamilton on my shelves, and I haven't read either of those yet. Uh, but again, they're <laughs> my ever-expanding TBR. But this is a this is a mammoth. Um, maybe maybe next year, if I feel up to uh, March of the Mammoths, I will tackle this possibly because this clocks in at let's see over 900 pages um so this is one heck of a biography but a figure that i really want to learn a lot more about um i know peg over at the history shelf she's a big grant fan um everything that i've read about him uh i i do find him fascinating from what i've what i've read about um, and of course, I'm a very pro-Union person when it comes to the uh, Civil War. Um, I know that, you know, his reputation as a butcher is not really warranted. Um, so I've seen some of the statistics that back that up. Uh, so I'm interested to see what this uh, will bring me. And maybe I'll try and read it in conjunction with his memoirs or something as well. Uh, but I'm glad to pick this up. Um, you know, one of the things I look for when I go on these kind of sale things is, is hardcovers of nonfiction because they can run so expensive. The other book that I was specifically looking for is this one, Embracing Defeat, 
Japan in the Wake of World War II by John W. Dower. Um, it was by Norton Publishing. And this came out, let's see, in 1999. Uh, but this is all about, you know, the, the defeat of Japan and them coming to terms with being taken over and controlled by the United States. Um, so, you know, and if you've seen my past videos, you know that I do have a an interest in Japan. I do teach a unit on it, and I want to learn as much as I can about it. And these are the certain aspects of the Japanese culture and experience that I want to better understand. Um, so, yeah, this is one that I've been looking out, be, I've been on the lookout for, uh, for a while. And I was really happy to find this. Um, it, at, inside their, uh, their dungeon basement <laughs> over at the book barn where they have all their nonfiction. Um, so, yeah, this is the other one, aside from Bloodlands, that I was specifically looking to see if they would have. And the last one that I picked up, larger, kind of an oversized hardcover. Uh, this is King Philip's War. The History and Legacy of America's Forgotten Conflict um, by uh, a um, two authors here. Uh, and what's really interesting about this, when I was looking through, is I mean, it is filled with maps and illustrations. Um, it goes through King Philip's War kind of state by state, the different things that occurred. And it is not just an account of a... a <laughs> you know, an unfortunately underknown war, uh, this conflict between Puritan, uh, Puritans in New England and the Native Americans, um, a very bloody and kind of close, close war. Um, this is not just an account of that, but it also kind of serves as, at least it seems to me when I was looking through it, um, it serves as a little bit of a guide uh, for those who are traveling around New England, um, and who want to maybe, you know, uh, identify places, um, see where certain things happened. They want to give you a feel for what's there now, um, and what happened there in those spots, uh, which is great. Um, and this is certainly, um, this is certainly helpful. Uh, one of the places that we went to on our little trip was Mystic, Connecticut. And, um, you know, there's a very famous massacre in Mystic, Connecticut, uh, that occurred uh, with the uh, um, English Puritans uh, massacring the Native Americans there. Um, not really in where the tourist area is located on the other side of the river and what's now a residential area. Uh, but, you know, this is, you know, I, I live in western Connecticut, but this is still essentially kind of like my backyard. Um, so I am happy to have this as a nice book and maybe even as kind of a future reference work. Um, so, yeah, King Philip's War. So, that's it. That's, that's my stack. Um, quite a few books, I'd say. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, not a bad haul. It wasn't too expensive. Um, and my kids, of course, got tons of books at the book barn, and they always enjoy going there and uh, checking it out as well. But, um, yeah, that's what I got. All right. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Have a good one, BookTube. <laughs>